Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here. Tuesday now, the 12th of September, 2023. On the update today, we're going to talk about the wind field of Hurricane Lee. It is very large and what that's going to mean for the areas that it might impact over the coming days. I'll also show you what these swells look like. We just so happen to have a camera out on the Outer Banks permanently at the Rodanthe Pier, and it caught those swells coming in this morning right around sunrise. They're still coming in, but you can just see them more prevalently at sunrise because of the way the lighting was. I'll show you that in just a minute. And we'll take a look at a few other things related to Lee, some of the modeling and so forth, as we try to narrow down where Lee will end up, who will it impact, and what will those impacts be. All right, thanks for joining me. Let's get started. First of all, satellite animation courtesy of our friends, our friend, I guess it's all Levi, Dr. Cowan putting this together for us. We always appreciate that. There is large Lee, really as a big hurricane generating a lot of ace points, accumulated cyclone energy. There is Margo, by the way, over in the northeastern Atlantic, moving into the subtropics. And then there's more energy down here that we will be watching over the coming days. And just as a real quick aside, I guess, I was looking at some stuff on Twitter and over at Storm 2K, different people talking about different things related to the weather and, of course, the tropics in particular. It does look like we're going to stay in a very active pattern throughout the rest of the month and probably heading into a good chunk of October. So just keep that in mind. This isn't the last show, so to speak. There will be more activity after we have Lee and Margo. This other system down there where the red line is, that probably will go on to develop. Then we're going to get into what we call CAG, or Central American Gyre Season, where you get these large turning areas, uh, or one big turning area of energy. It's just a big wind shift. It's a gyre, G-Y-R-E. And you get these little pieces of energy that spin off of them. That gave us Michael in 2018 as an example. And we have to watch that as we get towards the end of September and into October. There's that secondary peak that usually comes up around October 10th or so, so about a month away. Then hopefully things will start to calm down. So just, it's not over yet. But first, let's deal with Lee. And of course, it does have a big wind field. We're going to talk about that in more detail shortly. First of all, this is from this morning, 6.50 a.m. There's the sun that was peaking up. There's the swells that have been coming in. I mean, this is a great example. And just the way they're lit there with the shadows on our side here, the sun peeking up behind that thunderhead way out over the Gulf Stream, probably. But this is what the swells look like. These sets come in, some of them several feet high. Pretty neat to see the surfers hopefully enjoying this up and down the East Coast. But you got to be careful. They can obviously cause rip currents and neck and back injuries if you're not careful, especially in the breaking wave zone. If you're going to the beach, maybe you have no clue what you're looking for. You're finally getting to the beach this week or you're already down here anywhere along the eastern seaboard. Go to weather.gov, weather.gov. You can do it on your computer, your phone, doesn't matter. And just look and see if there's anything in red once you put your zip code in of where you are. And look for those beach hazard statements or rip current statements. Got to keep you safe. Uh, that's part of my job. All right, so just getting, getting you acquainted with what these swells look like. Maybe you've never seen them before. That's what it was like this morning near sunrise. All right, a couple things related to Lee. Let's go back to the Hurricane Center homepage. You click on Lee, and it jumps down to this nice little dashboard, if you will. And the wind speed probabilities have come up just a little bit now. Um, and it's not necessarily because Lee is forecast to be closer. It's because the wind field has expanded and will continue to expand. So now, eastern Long Island through most of eastern New England here proper, is Long Island part of New England? I don't know. Doesn't matter. I mean, to some it does, but for this purpose, no. The point is, you're in the 5 to 10 percent probability of what? Tropical storm force wind speed happening, maybe. And then the Cape out here uh, getting into the 20 to 30 percent range. And then in, in Maine, especially southeastern Maine, uh, a little bit higher. Um, and this is all owed to, again, the big wind field. So probabilities have gone up, not because Lee is forecast to be closer. Again, like I said, it's because the wind field is expanding. Now, how do you find that information? Again, you click on Lee, and then you look at this right here, the public advisory. 
And then I want you to scroll down, and it's right here under Discussion and Outlook. All right, I'm going to scroll this up a little bit so we can center it better. Discussion and Outlook, that's where the info is. It tells you some stats here, the wind speed stats here, and then right there. That is your best friend if you want to know about the wind field. Very easy to understand. Hurricane force winds extend outward up to 90 miles from the center. Tropical storm force winds 205. So that's a big wind field. And all of that's going to be moving across the Atlantic and up into the Canadian Maritimes, possibly New England, and that'll be impactful. There's no doubt about it. Hazards affecting land, that's the next part here. They talk about wind, surf, we've just discussed that. But that's a pretty, that's a lot of words there talking about surf. That means it's important. And then the rain bands, maybe a little bit of rain across Bermuda, 25 to 50 millimeters in uh, Bermuda, not terrible. Good, uh, good tank rains for you, as they call it there. All right, what about the modeling? The modeling, the modeling. We've been really looking at that the last few days. Looking at the Euro first, this is today's 12Z. Now look, this is important to note. This is 5,000 feet up, not 10 meters like we're going to look at on some of these other products up here, okay? So this is almost a mile up, and that's why these purples here, which show hurricane force winds, look like they are reaching coastal areas when in fact they are not. You'd have to go 5,000 feet up to get them. Why am I bringing that up? Well, let me show you. Let's, uh, this is the initial um, position and analysis from this morning, 12Z, Zulu time, 8 a.m. Eastern. Now we're at tomorrow, Wednesday morning, and then finally Thursday morning. And I want to change the map extent over here to the western Atlantic, and I want to point out Bermuda. Let's use black so it works better. There's Bermuda right there. 5,000 feet up, the wind speeds in the 40s and 50s knots wise, 40 to 50 knots. Down at the surface, maybe 35, 40 knots. I'm just guesstimating, especially considering how large the wind field is expected to be. That is why the Tropical Storm Watch has been posted. All right, let's go back out to the full North Atlantic. That was Thursday morning. There's Friday morning, Saturday morning. And again, you see these purples here, 5,000 feet up. That's where your hurricane force winds are. No, this is not the extent of hurricane force wind. We would be in real trouble if that was the case. It's just this version of the Euro on here, the EC Fast, as Dr. Cowan has labeled it, right in here, uh, only gives us certain parameters and layers and so forth. It's not until later in the afternoon that we get the full range of ECMWF frames, layers of the atmosphere, and so forth. But you see, it comes in Saturday morning, then by Sunday morning, it does slow down. That's very interesting, from Saturday morning to Sunday morning. I mean, just look, it's coming up the coast, and then it slows down considerably, making landfall there. Looks like right at the U.S.-Canada border, and uh, that could put a sizable surge, potentially, into the Bay of Fundy, certainly parts of Nova Scotia. Again, this is 5,000 feet in the atmosphere that we're looking at, so those colors there are almost a mile up in terms of 40, 50, 60 knot winds. But yeah, that's what the Euro is showing. Slowing down, it doesn't, it's hard to tell because these are 24 hour frames apart. It doesn't really do that bend back towards New England. But that won't mean that there's nothing that's gonna happen up there. We just still have some time. This is five days away. All right, that's really important to understand. Now on this one, this is one of the newer computer models and it's a nice wider shot for you. And this is the 10 meter wind, which is where we live, and the mean sea level pressure. And this is from the latest 12Z run. So we can move this out through time, and I can thank you rid of my telestration. There we go. And we can show you what Lee does here. There's Bermuda over to the right, and Bermuda gets into the greens and yellows, almost to the oranges, and since this is accurate in terms of where we are 10 meters, and believe me, Bermuda has plenty of areas that are more than 10 meters. Yeah, you could get some 40, almost 50 knot winds, maybe. Gives you an idea of the wind field. I mean, look, the green from here across, that's a pretty large area <clears throat> where you have 34 knot wind and higher. So that's your whole hurricane right there. That's a very giant wind field, and as you can see, 
it's moving north. But what happens? It starts to change and it's feeling the colder water, maybe some baroclinic processes in the atmosphere. But even Cape Cod, eastern New England up here, tropical storm conditions, Cape Cod Bay, right along the coast of Maine, it's going to be pretty rough. You know, not the worst ever, but not a big nothing either. And then the rainfall, we're going to have to wait and see. This is still, and I want to make sure I point this out, this is very important, it's 105 hours out in time. It can change enough, <clears throat> excuse me, still got the whatever going on. <laughs> you got to clear the throat sometimes. It's far enough out in time that we still have to understand that there could be some changes that bring higher wind, more precip, more rain. And the rain and the wind and the, the overall wet conditions we've had in the Northeast, we're not done yet. This is not locked in. So don't worry about where the center is. Look at that whole picture. And as that shifts subtly 20, 30, 50 miles either side, that'll determine who experiences what impacts as we go into the weekend, all right? This is just one of the models. This is the HAFS HAFS parent. Again, you just get a wider shot of it. It peters out over those colder waters, loses a lot of loses a lot of its convection, and thunderstorm and convective activity is what gets the wind to the surface, and then it makes landfall there in New Brunswick, right? All right, so that's what that one shows, that particular model. What about the B version, as we call it, and uh, it comes up. And I haven't researched this enough to tell you exactly what these mean. My apologies. I'll do that. That'll be my homework assignment. Uh, similar scenario, though, comes up and crawls to the coast there. Now, this one does try to get a little closer. You see that bend, feeling just a little bit of the troughiness, maybe. So that's what I mean. We're not completely done with, oh, everything's going to be fine. We're not there yet. All right, and then of course we have the GFS, and we might as well just switch this over to the northeast and see what this looks like as the GFS brings it up. And of course on this one we do get every few hours of frames. GFS tries to bend it back a little bit, but it's much later. Pretty big wind field there. This is 96 hours, so Saturday morning, um, 50 knot wind and higher. That's this area right through here. And then your tropical storm force winds out of the northwest across portions of the Outer Capes and elsewhere. Uh, pretty windy and rough day along the main coastline. But come on, you don't need me to tell you. You move this west just a few tens of miles and these impacts are more. You move it east a similar amount, these impacts are less. So yeah, we still have some time, 96 hours. Now, that's interesting, the GFS is a little faster overall. The slower this goes, a couple keys for you here, the slower this comes in, the more chance it has to do that pivot back toward the coast just a little bit. If it's going faster, it usually gets in and it does its thing and that's that. All right. One more thing I want to show you, looking at the overall height anomalies. Why does this happen? Why does this not just come on in and hit New England like that? The reason, and you can see it here, there's your trough right over here. And you've got your high pressure sitting up here. These are uh, the anomalies. The heights of the atmosphere are thicker, as we talked about the other day. And we move this through time. That trough comes in, erodes the ridge enough to get Lee moving east of north. And then it just doesn't have enough in terms of the atmosphere to bend it back. You understand that? There's just, now, of course, this is 102 hours out. Maybe that's different. We'll see. But that's not a lot of margin of error up there for more impacts for either Nova Scotia or New England. You see, we go back just a little bit. Not a lot of room there. You know, something happens a little faster. And in fact, that trough lifting out is what slows it down. So if it slows it down earlier, it does have a chance uh, for these heights to build back in and push Lee a little bit closer to the coast. So you guys up here in New England, don't write this off, all right? It's not looking like some historic catastrophe. Of course not. We would all know if that was going to happen. It would be pretty locked in. These ones that are fickle, they're usually not the ones to be as concerned with in terms of significant historic impacts. That's also something to keep in mind. Usually when they're just going to barrel through and everything's got that momentum, uh, even Sandy back in 2012, we knew that it was going to make that turn and come back towards the coast 
everything was pretty much locked in. This is a little different overall. The pattern and the time of year, uh, it's a little earlier obviously than Sandy was. And then where the ocean waters are cooling, not going to have the same types of impacts that we had, for example, with Sandy. But at the same time, you got to balance that hope there with don't ignore it and say, oh, it's just going to be nothing to worry about. We don't know for sure, all right? That's why we're here, kind of unpack it together. I'll show you what I'm looking at, and we hopefully make some informed decisions together. Now, in terms of me and what I might be doing, a few people have asked, are you going up there? Well, a lot depends on what Lee does over the next 24 hours or so. I could fly into Boston, bring a few of my camera systems with me, sure, and I could get down to the coast wherever needed in, in pretty short order. Not going to go to Nova Scotia. It's just harder to do and more expensive, uh, quite a bit more expensive. Um, and it's going to be much weaker once it gets up there in terms of wind impacts. But don't let that you know make it sound like, well, if Mark's not going, it's probably not going to be anything. Not what I'm saying. It's just, you know, that area that it comes into possibly, we're in the in-between zone where I don't really know for sure. So stay tuned tomorrow. I think we'll have a much better idea. We'll have it within about 72 hours, and then we can go from there. I might still go up. You know, I can get on a plane Friday morning and be in Boston in no time. Hey, that's the miracle of air travel, right? So stay tuned. I don't know yet. That's the short answer. But uh, if necessary, and there's some impacts that I could document and show you, then yes, especially since I do know people quite well in eastern Massachusetts. All right? As always, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate your time and attention. Hopefully you learned something. That's part of my goal here. For all of us at Hurricane Track, I am Mark Suddeth. I'll be back with you. Probably we'll do an update early tomorrow morning.